this with you. And I, you know, I don't think anybody on talk radio, I don't think anybody in their right mind is going to ever say this out loud. But I wonder if I'm the only one that feels this way. You know, it took me about a year to start hating the 9-11 victims' families. It took me about a year. Um, and I had such compassion for them, and I really, you know, I wanted to help them, and I was behind, you know, let's give them money, let's get started, you know, all of this stuff. And I really didn't, you know, all the 3,000 victims' families, I don't hate all of them. I hate about probably about 10 of them. And, but when I see, you know, 9-11 victim family, you know, on, on television or whatever, I'm just like, oh, shut up. I'm so sick of them because they're always complaining, and we did our best for them. And it, again, it's only about 10. But the second thought that I had when I saw these people and they had to shut down the Astrodome and lock it down, I thought, I didn't think I could hate victims faster than the 9-11 victims. These guys, when you see, and you know, it's really sad. We're not hearing anything about Mississippi. We're not hearing anything about Alabama. We're, we're, here, um, uh, we're hearing uh, about the uh, victims in New Orleans. This is a 90,000 square mile disaster site. New Orleans is 181 square miles. 108.2% of the disaster area is New Orleans. And that's all we're hearing about are the people in New Orleans. Those are the only ones that we're seeing on television are the scumbags. Again, and it's not all of the people in New Orleans. Most of the people in New Orleans got out. It's just a, a small percentage of those who were left in New Orleans or who decided to stay in New Orleans, and they're getting all of the attention. It's exactly like the 9-11 victims' families. There's about 10 of them that are spoiling it for everybody. When we started questioning what actually happened on that day, what should have happened on that day based on um, information we had gleaned from reports uh, and even earlier mainstream articles on how other incidents were handled uh, with regard to counterterrorism. We found all these other protocols and procedures about what happens when a plane goes off its course wildly, as we know, happened on September 11th. Senator Dayton. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Mr. Chairman, Mr. Co-Chairman, I want to say again to you that we are all indebted to you and to the other eight the members of your commission and your staff. Uh, it is a profoundly disturbing report because it, it chronicles in excruciating detail the terrible attack against our homeland and because of the utter failure to defend them by their federal government, by their leaders and the institutions that were entrusted to do so. And this was not an occasional human error or failure. This was nothing but human error and failure to follow established procedures and to use common sense. If a plane goes off course, it's a danger to the other planes that are in the sky. So there are protocols in place that if you, there's no radio, they can't contact the plane for a certain amount of time, or the plane goes terribly off course, that we will send up a military jet to intercept it so as to bring that plane back on course. What we needed were Air Force intercepts sent to investigate why the planes were off course, why their transponders had been uh, turned off. We didn't need a shoot down at that moment. We needed to know who was in that plane, why was it off course, and then follow um, you know, a series of protocols and procedures from there. So when we looked at the timeline for September 11th, and you know, there was no intercepts on September 11th, we could never understand how that could not have happened and why, if it didn't, you wouldn't go back to those people and say, what went wrong here? According to your report, the first of the four airliner hijackings occurred on September 11th at 8.14 a.m. Eastern Time. At 10.03 a.m., almost two hours later, an hour and 49 minutes to be exact, the fourth and last plane crashed before reaching its intended target. During those entire 109 minutes, to my reading of your report, this com country and its citizens were completely undefended. We started to hear that the, um, they knew that Flight 11, the first flight that hit my husband's building, 
um, American Airlines Flight 11, was a known hijacking somewhere around 8.20 in the morning. For 30 minutes before it hit the World Trade Center, controllers in Boston and New York had been tracking and listening to the first hijacked plane, American Flight 11. At 8.37 and 52 seconds, Boston Center reached NIADS. This was the first notification received by the military at any level that American 11 had been hijacked. We have a, a problem here. We have a hijacked aircraft headed towards New York, and we need you guys to, we need someone to scramble some S-16s or something up there to help us out. Is this, is this real world or exercise? No, this is not an exercise manifest. There were two F-16s from the 177th Fighter Wing in Atlantic City, Air National Guard Unit, doing bomb sorties over the pine lands of New Jersey, eight minutes away from Manhattan. And the first, they, they admit in the report today that they contacted Atlantic City, but they said they were basically inactive. So you had two F-16s eight minutes away that could have stopped, potentially thwarted AA-11, not to mention the second flight. So what about that? These were planes... Uh, were not thought to be errant. They were, thought, they were known to be hijacked quite early on. Mike Blake is an air traffic controller at the Boston Center. American 11 um, had stated on the frequency that we have more planes. In fact, controllers knew a second plane, United 175, was right behind the first one and notified top officials. Um, you know, when you started looking at how could that plane be flying around the skies as a hijacking and then hit a building um, and then have a second plane hit a second building at 903 and then have the Pentagon, which is supposed to be our country's defense, get hit at 940 or 938 uh, with a third plane and then have the final plane go down in Pennsylvania at 1003 or 1006. Victoria, let's talk a moment about American Flight 77, mm -hmm. evading detection for some 36 minutes. Mm -hmm. Is there any rational explanation for that? You need to understand at the time, and I was in the middle of this, at the time there were literally thousands of airplanes in the skies over the United States. And many, many parts of the federal government, including the FAA and NORAD and others, were focused on trying to get those planes on the ground. There were lots of false signals out there. There were false hijack squawks, and, and a great part of the challenge was sorting through what was a legitimate threat and what wasn't. Is that defensible, Peter? Indefensible. There's the greatest failure of defense in American history. But what I find much more shocking were the repeated and catastrophic failures of the leaders in charge and the other people responsible to do their jobs. And then they failed to tell us the truth later. It doesn't matter whether they were Republicans, Democrats, or neither. It matters what they did or did not do.